Uh, he's like running away and he just throws <laughs> Zadar just it javelins an axe into his chest yes. and then snaps the other guy's neck. It's incredible. Welcome back to the 183rd episode. God, we've done so many of these. Good, bad, bad, bad. The show I share when we tell you you should do. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Schiller. I'm going to move this mic closer to your face. Okay, okay. Oh, Not that quite. Okay, okay, you can be a little for like right somewhere in there the middle. Go. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. <laughs> show we watch share when we tell you you should do. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Schiller. Joined once again by Mr. Kyle Hinton. Kyle. Dragon fight! <laughs> Zidar! <laughs> The movie we're talking about today is 1990s Dragon Fight. Kyle, uh, where did you find this movie? Uh, this was looking through Zadar's his filmography on IMDb, and I found one that was like, okay, he's wearing like chainmail in this yeah. and has an axe. And it's set in like modern day America. Yeah, I'm watching this. <laughs> it's wild. I and Zajar, bro, he has some range in this mm-hmm. one. We'll get into it, but he this is the most like restrained and interesting Robert Zadar performance, which is not saying a lot from the movies of his that we've seen. But <laughs> I was impressed. But yes, Robert Zadar. Uh, 1990 film called Dragon Fight, which we'll get to why it's called that. Uh, written by the guy that wrote Rotor. Its prime directive to judge and to execute. Which we have not oh done, boy. but I believe is a red letter media maybe did it at one point. Uh, sounds, R-O-T-R-O-R. Yeah. Uh, the guy, same guy that wrote that wrote this. Um, and it's... It's bad, but we'll yeah, get into that. This, um, this was right of first act. Get them into the desert, finish it later. And then (laughs) kind of the Neil Breen school of like just film people running around in the desert for a while and then just try (laughs) to stitch that all together. If you take the first 30 minutes of this movie, it seems like a completely different film until they get out into the desert. Yeah. And then it's just like. Okay, so you you were like, all right, actors, we're gonna pay you to run around the like Navajo Nation. We don't really have days. a plan. We're just gonna like <laughs> film you guys running around. I guess, yeah, <laughs> it's pretty great. But we open up on a, a an incredibly clunky sword fight uh, a silhouette silhouetted s- against the sun slow motion that's not slow motion they're just moving slowly yeah. and like <laughs> banging their swords against each other it, lo- it looks terrible um, but the, the, the i will say in contrast to that the opening music pretty awesome. good yeah pretty pretty good there's some good music throughout this which we'll talk about but the opening opening music is pretty good Uh, but then we get in. Uh, I think it's an, like an opening, like voiceover explaining what <laughs> the world that we exist in in yes. this movie. Yes. You see, just the world's governments were learning to get along with each other. The mega corporation stepped in, and spoiled it all. Which is that mega corporations? Th- there, we were about to have world peace. All the nations like figured their shit out. I guess <laughs> we were about to have world peace, but then mega corporations stepped in and spoiled everything. Damn those mega corporations! <laughs> and they invoked dragon fights. What? Dug up some sort of ancient Japanese rite of battle. They called it dragon fight. Which is the a- an ancient Japanese form of like battle, like dueling, yeah. or something. I'm confused on why like countries <laughs> from you know everywhere that's not Japan would be like, oh yeah, we're down for this. It's just such a str- yeah. They just picked a very specific. I don't, I don't know if this is even a real thing based on a historical <laughs> thing. I have no idea, and I did not look it up because this movie does not deserve that. But I do. I did. I I was like, what is this? Maybe this is a real thing, but it's called Dragon Fight. Mm. And yes, they use this. And, and, and for a minute, I will say the 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 lore and the world building of this movie is terrible because we there's like no explanation. Of like why any of these business services are involved in this specific thing. There's like some throwaway lines about like money, basically. Yeah. Well, <laughs> like this is how your ancestors gained honor to complement their wealth. It's already been done. 
if you were to throw it to old, like old medieval type stuff, yeah, this would be the equivalent of two families making a right. claim over something, and the then their king, champions go. Yeah, their champions go to the war. The king is like whoever wins the death combat. You know, it's like trial by combat from Game of Thrones. Yes. It, it's that style of thing because it, it also reminded me of at least what they were. I thought they were trying to set up, but that's the other thing about this movie is that compared to a movie like Robot Jocks mm-hmm. that has tons of world building and like you see the dystopia we're living in, this world just looks like the normal world. It, yes, like it seems like the normal world because like people are just like camping and like hanging out and stuff. <laughs> like it seems normal except that there's this weird dystopian. Like fight to the death that these mega corporations do, but it seems like it's a secret. Like it's not because, like in Robot Jocks, it's like the, it's like the form of entertainment yeah, it, and all this sort of stuff. It's like a a it's it's a post R world type thing. So yeah. it's like it gives you that sense of sci fi, you know, more heavily into the the fantasy part of sci fi. <laughs> this this movie does not give me that this at does, all. No, th- oh, this oh, no, Robot, Robot Jocks. Jocks yes, does. yes, yes. Sorry, I thought yeah. you were talking about this movie. No, yeah. th- this is like. What if we just pay a couple homeless guys to fight to the death in the desert? <laughs> For real, that's what it feels like. There's no world building here. But anyway, so we uh, great thing apart from Robert Zarr, you know who else is in this fucking movie? James Hong, incredible, mm-hmm. been in tons of stuff. Uh, most recently, probably most famously, Everything Everywhere All at Once. But in all kinds. My favorite of stuff. part is like they cast him. They cast him literally as a generic Asian businessman. Yes. Where it's like, is he Chinese? Yeah, he is not. He's the Japanese representative, I believe, yeah. like for a Japanese company. I was like, I don't uh, believe James Hong is Japanese. You don't see anyone around here strapping on a samurai sword. <laughs> of course not a samurai sword. Fun but, thing, who else is in this movie? Uh, well, uh, there's a few people, you, mm-hmm. but who are you thinking Well, let's of? let's go with uh, the, the, the ranger, Charles, Charles Napier. Charles Napier, yes, mm-hmm. who we've seen in something. Uh, it was uh, One Man of Force. Oh, he, okay, he was one yeah. of the one of the ba- one of the uh, bad guy henchmen. Also known from other stuff. Also, yes. Michael Pare. <laughs> yes, who he did in uh, and I realized Mummy, Mummy Dearest. He was the yes. chiropractor. <laughs> it, and the, isn't he the cop in that one movie where he's like a detective? The uh, poly, was it Polybus? What was the name? No, that's the. What was the name of that one that had a really weird name that was like a? a they were like a killing. It was like the women killing. It turned out to be like all a conspiracy that the women were like had set up, and there's like the detective and the other guy, and they like kill all three of these guys at the same time to do. Oh, some, uh, you know it was about? a K- Kindavidian film, right? Kinky Killers might have been that what was, the movie was yes. called, but it had like a different name, and they're talking. Dude, about, what a weird, he was like the detective. I think, in that, yeah, yeah, I think yeah. he was. What a weird range of like like films from like 1990 to like 2014. <laughs> Insane. <laughs> Insane. But yes, James Hong is in this movie. I was like, that's amazing. Um, and he, his assistant guy comes to, I don't even know if he works for him. I never could figure out who this guy was. <laughs> I was confused too. Cause he goes to like every business. He, yeah. He goes to every, maybe like a broker. Yeah, I guess that's, I guess that's what it's, but, but it seemed initially like I thought he was working for the Japanese company, but I'm, mm. I can't tell because event, because in this first scene, he's like, Hey, we got to do this dragon fight <laughs> for something for mm. money, whatever. This is how your ancestors gained honor to complement their wealth. It's already been done. This is the file. Uh, but we need a champion, and he's like, "I know a guy. Uh, let me go recruit this warrior." I love basically. how he hands uh, James Hong the uh, the thing. It's it's all in it's all in uh, Japanese except for Dragon Fight. <laughs> it's in English for some reason. Like I said, every, like I said everything else is in Japanese. It's, like, it's Dragon Fight. And the bottom right hand goes TM. TM. <laughs> killing me i wonder if they did that for the actual movie or because that's a moment that feels like it should be satirical but Mm. nothing else about this movie feels remotely like a satire or anything like that you know like nothing else about this movie feels like it's like critiquing it on on anything really this film was successful you know what this would have been a street fighter or mortal Kombat clone Oh, and then they, they, like they would have rolled this into a video game. Yeah, different the different soldiers or mm. like the the fighters that you, yeah I could see that I could see that they're too boring though. Like at least our first two that we're introduced to. <laughs> yeah, I mean Robert Zarr is at least somewhat interesting, but our main character is just dad no. yeah. jeans guy. Like I don't understand. Yeah. Like he's not a character. Feathered that, hair dad jeans guy. Yeah, he's not particularly interesting. But speaking of feather hair dad jeans guy, we're introduced to him, and his name is Falchion. Isn't that a sword? Yes, it is. It's great. Hey, Falchion. Where is Gina these days? Falchion or whatever. Uh, and he is getting a... B- 
Like he's getting picked on by some giant dude at a bar. Yeah, this dude's big. Yeah. Uh, also, I'm not sure if you noticed the music at the bar was getting really heavy into the uh, Sword of Heaven vibe with the oh, motorcycle it? chase music. No, I missed that. Oh, boy. I'll put them, like, Fantastic. one after the other. Hey, Swords Master. But he's getting messed with, and our, our, the assistant, the guy who was with James Hong in the last scene, who's recruiting the warrior or whatever, mm. is there to find, and we think initially he's getting the big guy, but no, he's there for uh, dad jeans, who is getting picked on by this guy, and he's like, fine, let's take it outside. And <laughs> they go outside to fight, and because like at this point, uh, Falchion is out of the game. He doesn't yeah. fight anymore. And he's, he's like, retired. killed many people in these dragon fights Apparently, before. yes. That's what he's, yeah, he's like a very like esteemed dragon fighter <laughs> or whatever. Telmark Corporation set this up three years ago. Two hundred and thirty million dollars in stock options was riding on it. Um, you're right. It's totally Street Fighter was <laughs> what they were gonna end up going for. And then, so they go outside to fight, and they're they're like thrown down, and everybody comes outside to watch them. For the, this giant guy who's got a weird name, like Bull or something like that, <laughs> fight uh, fight Falchion. Come on outside. And they're they're fighting, and he's getting, and Falchion actually gets his ass kicked. He gets thrown in a dumpster. <laughs> And then he gets out of the dumpster, and I love Ooh. some random old guy in the crowd pulls mm. out a knife. Well, they hand it to the bull guy first, and he's like, they? Yeah, yeah, he like starts fighting him. He gets oh, yes, you're right, you're right, you're right. But and then, yeah, and then some random person just picks, picks up the it up. There's no rhyme, reason, or anything for this. Never explained, and just runs in. And I'm not even sure who he was trying to stab in the scene, but he ends up stabbing oh, the bull. Oh boy, here I go guy. stabbing again. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, here I go killing again. But I love, he just runs in and stabs him, and he's just like, oh, I guess oh. he wins okay. now, because that guy stabbed the other guy. Again, I don't even know if he was trying to stab that guy. It's pretty great. He only punctured one lung. I might be able to make it to the hospital <laughs> if we get an ambulance here right away. Yeah. No, no buddy, you're, you're, you're dead. <laughs> Uh, so then, uh, again, it's it's explained a little more that they basically have this big fight to the death for money, and mm -hmm. and a company, and I think we're introduced to a second company that wants to win it, who's run by Bill Pullman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that guy looks like fucking Bill Pullman. He looks, dude. Like, he looks like fucking like he looks like a. He weird... also looks like. Gordon, Gordon, I was I was gonna go Gordon Gecko. I was gonna say Emilio Costa. Estevez. So yeah, I'm, we're in the same ballpark. I'm gonna go Martin Sheen. <laughs> yes, we're in the same like family yes. tree. It's, there. It's, it's, it's the hair slipped <laughs> yes. back and yeah. just the right level of yep. condescending asshole with money. Yeah. <laughs> All of a sudden, you come to me with this kung fu honor crap. I mean, be for real, will you? <laughs> to me, he because I, I had that same thought too. But then the more I looked at him, I could not stop seeing Bill Pullman from uh, <laughs> Independence Day. Like yeah. every time, I mean, with the suit and everything, it's just so much. But anyway, so he's getting involved now. It's like, isn't that isn't that sad? Where you can't even get Joe Estevez to come and be yeah, like right. a sleazy business guy? I know. Yeah, because this is just some no name actor. Mm -hmm. At least I think I, I didn't recognize him from anything. So then uh, we're we're we we're introduced to Zadar, uh, who has got a crate Lobaker lo Loka Bear Loka Bear something like that. Yeah, something he, like that. He, he just I guess he lives exclusively off the bunny that he gets just killing people. Yes, because he lives relatively well. Like he, yeah. he looks like he has like a jag and everything, and his and he he seems rich. Yeah, just by killing people because he's got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and we just see him a bunch of guys attack him, and he just beats the shit out of all of them, and that's how and we're these people the character. these people were hired to test them yes and he just kills them yeah m most of them yeah it's, it's, hey, hey i need you to go rough up this guy and yeah. uh just he just you know, murders yeah them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh but then so now we've established so now this this is guy is gonna fight lobaker or whatever mm. is fighting or loca bear or whatever is fighting for uh the bill pullman's company and i think they say 300 million dollars is on the line yeah. or something along those lines and may the best man win mm. How much? Three hundred million. And so it's basically a fight between these two. Because initially, I thought it was going to end up being like a like a Hunger Games situation, where it's going to be like lots of warriors. But it's just these two guys. It's like a yeah. a duel of yeah, a one on one v one me in the woods, bro, kind of situation. One v one me in the desert. Um, and then, so we just jump right in. We like push right into the actual mm. plot. Uh, and, or, and this was everything that we had to do for the the like from the writing perspective is let's get them to the middle of the desert as fast as we can. Yeah. 
Because yeah, after this, there is almost like no other actors in the same spot. Yeah. Because our guy is also just, so our main character, Falchion, just is like, why does he end up in the desert? Because he refuses to do this battle, yeah. but he still is in the desert for some reason. And I'm not sure how he gets there or why. But anyway, so now we're just in the desert. Um, and we were introduced for the first time to Zadar in his battle gear. It's so good. Motherfucker is wearing mail. Like head to toe and like the most ridiculous like leather it, it, he, he looks, looks insane. He looks like a He-Man villain. Yes. Like a bad He-Man villain. Like a spirit Halloween costume He-Man villain, dude. It's <laughs> incredible. He looks amazing. Hell's where you're going. Oh my god. Um and then also we're introduced, there's some mystical sexy lady. Yes. That she will be important later, but we see her like <laughs> once early in the film, kind of like with daggers in the sand or whatever, like kind of walking her or like doing something. We're like no idea what's going on with her. Then we go back to Falchion and he's just wandering the desert. It's like, screw this. Yeah, he's like, nope, I'm getting out here. Screw I, you guys. I'm going home. I love we get VO and I this might be the TV, but they're not watching a TV show because it's not broadcast to yeah. anybody except the business I, people. I, we get a voiceover. Yes, though. I think. Isn't that the uncle? Yeah, I think you might be right. So I don't know. Yeah, it's weird. We get this voiceover, I guess, from the uncle that literally just explains Falchion's backstory. Mm. It's just like... When them companies took away the good reason to fight, the code and the honor went out along with it. Oh, yeah, he used to fight in a bunch of dragon fights, uh, but he gave up on it. And like, it's just like, here's the background you need to know about <laughs> Falchion. We're just going to have it, it got totally exposited. I got in tired of killing people for money, uh, so I'm going to go... Uh, in the desert and die now. Yes. Because he just walks in the middle of the desert with zero provisions, zero water, zero anything. He's he got his sword. He's got his sword. Wrapped That's in a it. little bag. And I think he's might have a backpack, but yeah, basically nothing. And then we're also, and this is where the movie started going a little off the rails for me in terms of like too many things. You're putting a hat mm -hmm. on a hat here. What is the story with the five rings? I don't, this is irrelevant, <sighs> I think. One of the Japanese guys is like, Falchion has mastered the five rings and if he wins this he'll get the sixth ring i don't understand what any of this means or what the I point is i have no clue like okay. <laughs> to bushido the art of warfare is represented symbolically by five rings of power each one a level i think what that is is they needed to they needed him to have an ambition of some sort yeah that he either needs to reject or that Embracer, needs to yeah. drive him to do something foolish. What do you get? Six ring. The sixth ring? I guess. I, I could not understand. But he immediately throws it away anyway. Yeah, I did not understand this at all. Anyways, hey, he's doing the Neil Breen sleeping tour. Like, he's just sleeping everywhere Neil Breen yes. has ever slept in a movie. <laughs> and then uh, immediately Zadar just finds him. And it's like, hey, what, wake up, dork. And he's like, we're going to fight to the death because that's why we're here. And Falchion's like, no, I'm not. I'm leaving. <laughs> and he's like, what? You can't just leave. And he's like, I'm leaving. Bye. <laughs> uh, and they talk about the sixth th the ring thing. And Zadar's like, that's a myth. Like, that what? doesn't exist. I'm what? like, I don't even know what it is to know what I yes. just, I don't understand what any of this means. It doesn't matter. Falchion, Falchion, too many fairy tales for you. But this is what I was talking about. This whole scene between him and Zadar is the most restrained I've ever seen Zadar. He's like actually acting. <laughs> yes. What I think is great about his character, his character is simple. It, it makes it very easy for him as an actor to have a goal each scene. Yeah. Which is you you want to get into a fight with this guy for a sense of either honor. You have, you know, the, to you, there is nothing greater than the thrill of, you know, yeah. fighting. Yeah. He basically explains in the scenes that ours like, look, it's I, I'm going to kill you because it's the honorable thing to do. But also his other secondary explanation or motivation, which is interesting. He's like, look, the rich assholes get rich no matter what. This is my way to take some of their money. <laughs> so like, he's there like that's the other that's his <laughs> other motivation. There's your Bushido. We deserve a fair share. He's like, look, they're going to keep all the money either way, so I might as well take some of it by and murdering people. that's the beautiful people. thing. Sometimes you just need a very simple motivation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then they get into a fight, and it's maybe... Uh, <laughs> He pulls his sword out, and oh, the design of his it's sword so, is so, so cheesy, yes. dude. It's got these big metal wing it's, things on it. It's a mall sword. It's very much a, a mall ninja shit. It, um, but, it, but it's the top tier mall sword. Oh, yeah. That's the one that's like at the top oh, of the rack yeah. that he has to like possibly get on the little step stool to grab. <laughs> yeah. 
Absolutely. Uh, um, and, and, and also, uh, so, and Zadar has, like, this axe thing. That's just uses. ridiculous. That's clearly made out of, like... Just, aluminum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like sp- stamped aluminum and like stuck to a thing. But I love, he also has the worst axe technique you've ever seen. Mm. So much of this movie, he just spins the axe in a circle pointlessly. Yeah, like, what also, are you doing? Also, just tell us that the thing weighs nothing. Yes, obviously it weighs absolutely because it's made out of stamped aluminum and fucking fiberglass or something like that. Oh my God. Um, Anyway, so he's got this axe, and then he's just swinging this thing around, and they fight for a little bit. And then randomly in the middle of their fight, some guy on a motorcycle drives up. And I thought this was going to be a guy involved yeah. in the thing. No, no, this is a know, random person. <laughs> it's Tadashi. <laughs> Going through the sand dunes, <laughs> he gets murdered. That's what happened at the end, after that movie ended. Yeah. He just like drives through this movie and just gets murdered by Robert Zadar because Robert Zadar knocks him off the motorcycle it and just takes the axe to him. What? Yeah. And again, I thought, oh, this is like some other like we're gonna find out this guy was sent by like one of the other businesses mm. as like an illegal like fighter into the ring and Zadar killed him because of that no it's no, just a no, guy some random dude in the wrong place at the wrong time literally a dude joyriding through the like, desert uh, <laughs> this is dragon fight this is not dragon fight <laughs> ah! Miles and miles of empty desert. Yeah. You happen to go into the one wrong spot. Yes. Oh, and we'll find out it's not about miles and miles of empty desert. There's so many people where they're fighting. It's not that they're, they keeps running into more random mm. people over and over again. Uh, and the thing that surprised me is that then we find out because we cut back to the businessmen and they're all like, wait, this isn't what we signed up for. That guy just got murdered. That's And I'm like, you're doing an illegal death ring fight. <laughs> what are you? What? The. the there is something there is something weird because they say like this is a designated zone. Yeah. And they don't seem to be too afraid if these two people die in this designated zone. But once they leave the designated zone, then they're like, "Why well, don't want to fence the gum." You know what I think the designated zone is? Navajo Nation. Cuz that's where this was shot oh, at. You think? I think that they they have some sort of thing with the Native American reservation land to be like, hey, we're going to pay you some money so we can have death combat in your area. That's a lot of leaps you made because none of that is addressed. It's the only in the thing movie. I can think that, no, that makes I, sense. No, that, you could be right. You could be right. But yeah, none of that is ever mentioned in the movie other than the fact that there's like some designated zone. They don't say what it is. They don't even say where really it is other than where we see them. Mm. Um, but anyways, yeah. <laughs> no firearms, no projectiles. The two combatants meet in a designated battle zone and may the best man win. But they're, they're very upset that this random civilian got killed. And I was like, you guys are doing a, again, whatever. Sure, fine. I guess I guess you're upset that this person got killed. Uh, then uh, Falchon is able to get away after this happens. And he almost gets run over by uh, Sandra Twice. and her drunk uncle. <laughs> well, I just called Drunkle the rest of the movie. Drunkle, yes. Dang it, San, I told you to slow down. Come back up and see if he's all right. I'll give me another beer. And yeah, she almost runs him over twice, like you said. <laughs> and they have a very brief encounter here. And then after they get done talking, Falchin like walks off, and they get back in the car to leave. And a drunkle is my favorite character in this movie. How do you know that he's been drinking? Because he'll tell you. Because he oh, tells you <laughs> always, always, <laughs> all the time. Hey, best get in. You drive. I've been drinking. That's my favorite scene. At you're gonna have to be. You're gonna drive. I've been drinking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you drive. I've been drinking. I was like, is this what it's friends or is this what it's like to be friends with Mike Staclasa? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, um, then uh, Drunkle and Sandra find a body. They're like driving through mm. the desert. And they just stumble across a body, and I think it might be the motorcycle guy or like, or different. Maybe. No, or the hunter. No, he it's just, not the hunter. He just yet. goes on a the. He Robert kills Zadar goes on a killing yes. spree. But but it, every time they find a body, he has written the word like fight in blood or whatever, like above the body. Mm. Um and then uh when he runs then because then Zadar runs into the guys with guns who I guess are hunting and he just like murders them as well or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh one of them's named Bill, and I love uh he's like running away and he just throws <laughs> Zadar just it javelins an axe into his chest yes. and then snaps the other guy's neck. It's incredible. Oh, God. I also love after that, there's a scene. I think they find those bodies then, Sandra and Drunkle. Mm-hmm. And as they're leaving, oh, no, because their car breaks down. 
Yeah, and That's... they got to jack the truck up to change the tire or whatever because I guess their tire popped or went flat. And I love the the, the jack in the truck isn't heavy enough to lift the no, truck. No, no, it's the, the the soil is too oh, loose. Oh, is It'll that just, what it is? It, w- it would just puts the jack into the dirt versus lifting the truck. Okay. Up. Yeah, no way. That jack's never gonna support the weight of this truck and this sand. But as they're they're realizing the jack's not gonna work, he, she goes and throws it in the truck bed, and he's like, "Hey, don't scratch my truck." He, he is great. I, I assume most of his lines yeah. were improvised, but I really enjoyed Drunkle in this one. I thought he was a lot of fun. <laughs> Try not to scratch the truck bed, would you? <laughs> and then we cut back, and Zadar again. I cannot stress enough how confusing it is that Zadar is in insane fantasy like armor because everybody else is in normal clothes yes the rest not a single other character looks well, anything like well normal i guess clothes the, for the 90s <laughs> sexy mystical lady is also in some sort of like fantasy garb but yes. every other character is just in like jeans now, is this the part where he runs into the the rangers uh, I believe we're about to, but then, well, because bef- yeah, before that, Falchion is able to just hold up the truck and let them change their, they find him again, and he, like, changes their tire or whatever, mm. he just holds the truck up. And they- That's the crazy thing, because, so we have that, and then we have later with Zadar having mystical things as well, that's removed from the the witch. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think these are just, like, s- superpower Super warriors. soldiers or something? Yeah. Uh, could you, could, ima- be. could you imagine all these companies like basically have their own like Steve Rogers yeah. projects going on? It's like we need to we need to make super serum soldiers. Yet again, another thing that would have been cool for the movie to even mention if that's what they're it's doing. It's part of the video game, Brian. <laughs> So annoying. Oh, my God. I love it. So at the end of this scene, they, they're talking about how they found the bodies. Falchion is talking to Sandra and Drunkle, and they're, they're talking about how they found these bodies, and they're going to go report it mm. to the park rangers or whatever. And I love <laughs> Bill or uh, what uh, Falchion <laughs> says. I know who did. Who? Corporate industry. As they're looking at the bodies, he's like, I know who did this. Corporate industry. <laughs> Corporate industry. I know who did this. Job jobs. <laughs> like what? It's just like, like what? Business jobs. <laughs> like it's just, it's like a Neil Breen line if ever there was one. Yes. Programmable matter. We will all be connected telepathically. Corporate industry. It's <laughs> so funny. Pro- just screaming programmable matter. Programmable matter. <laughs> Oh, God. And then we find out Bill Pullman now, he knows, because there, there's cameras recording this that they're able to watch. Mm. He knows that Sandra and her uh, and Drunkle are going to go report this to the park rangers. And I'm like, is he really going to murder those park rangers? Because he says, Falchion's going to call the park rangers. If there aren't any rangers, Falchion can't tell them his problems. If there aren't any park rangers, they can't report the crime to them. And I'm like, but then you have a bunch of dead park rangers. <laughs> yes. that, that does not solve your no. problem. Especially if you're like two people who go missing in the desert sucks. I mean, right. aside from their immediate family, yeah. You know, uh, if you have people whose job it is to report to higher ups, yeah, immediately, yeah, it was like the worst idea ever. They just fly a helicopter in and gun down like four <laughs> park rangers, and I was like, now your problem is way worse. What are you doing? You're so stupid. And I also love it. And I guess this is a thing in the deserts, but like their their park ranger station is just like this little shack in the middle of the desert there's like nothing else around it uh, and they literally just show up in the helicopter and gun them all down um and then meanwhile uh now falchion they they were about to get there and then they get the helicopter comes for them or something because falchion mm. and drunkle and sandra all jump into like this like Revit culvert or whatever, uh, and they're hiding from the, the helicopter. Meanwhile, Drunkle's still just <laughs> down in beers because that's, yeah, that's my his last whole beer. character. It's, it's not his last one, Kyle. No, that's, that's for later. <laughs> his whole character is that he's drunk all the time. You're the designated driver. I, I've been drinking. Oh, oh my god. Uh, and then randomly, the final park ranger, this is Charles Napier, yes. shows up. Uh, his name's, he's got a crazy name. It's like Hoo- um, Moon, 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 Chow or something. Moochow, yeah. I something like Moochow. that. I'm Ranger Moochow, Park Service. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. We got some trouble in the area. But he shows up and he's really mad 
uh, because he thinks all of these murders are essentially Falchion's fault for just not fighting. He's like, dude, they're murdering all these people because you won't fight or whatever. And Falchion's like, nah, who cares? I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't, I mean, it just seems indifferent to this. It's fucking wild. You two were put off here to fight. You won't. So he's starting all this killing mess in order to get you to fight. Uh, meanwhile, we then cut over, and again, you say remote, uh, there's more people, there's just random people having a picnic now in the middle of the fucking desert. True enough. God, is this, the, is this the family with, like, the two kids? No, this is even before that. Even this before is just that? two random people having a picnic on a folding table, like psychopaths, too. They just drove their van to the middle of the desert and set up a table and are eating, like, in the sun. It's Yes. It's not how you have a picnic. No, it's so not the desert. Find yes. some shade. Yes, it's so weird, but whatever. Um, they're just, like, having a picnic there. I don't even know. I don't even know if anything happens with them or if it matters at all. Um, but then, uh, <laughs> we're, we're uh, uh, the fucking, uh, Falchon does some more explanation. Uh, he explains to them who Lokabear is. He's like, his name's Lokabear. He's a corporate gladiator like me. Like, <laughs> corporate like gladiator. Me. His name's Lokabear. He's a corporate gladiator like me. Uh, and meanwhile, Lokabear actually has kidnapped Sandy somehow. He was able to grab her. I don't, mm. I don't remember exactly what goes down where he's able to grab her. I don't remember what happened. I think I saw him carrying her off. They had to um, split up for something. It was Drunkle and our main dude, and then Charles Napier and Sandy, and then like Charles Napier gets like jumped, knocked out, and yeah, he run he runs off with her. Yeah. Uh, anyways, eventually Falch he runs off with her. Falchion is able to follow them because for some reason, I guess he's doing this on purpose so that Falchion yes. will follow him. He's like marking stones as he mm -hmm. goes with his axe, and Falchion follows this. Um, and then again, we keep randomly cutting back to sexy dagger lady, and I'm like, who? There's no, no this? explanation yes. for sexy dagger lady, and there never will be, Kyle. No. There never no, will there's be. There's not. There's no explanation for who this is or what is going on with her. Um, and so he finally catches up with them, and they duel, du -du -du duel over fucking Sandra. And now, Kaiba, it's time to duel. And he just wins and yes. impales the door. He, he impales him on his own axe. Yes, hoist by his own petard, as oh. it were, Kyle. Um, but, surprise, strange magic sexy lady is Bill Pullman's ace in the hole. He says, literally says, she's my magic lady. <laughs> you see that strange lady out there? That's my ace in the hole. It's my magic lady. That's the extent of the, the explanation the we point, get. Uh, one of the points they make is like, oh, we're screwed. Our guy's dead. That's, he's mortally wounded. Uh, how can you tell? He's got a fucking axe coming out of his back. Literally going through his spine. <laughs> That's how I know. Damn it. Our man's dying out there. But don't worry. He's got a magic lady and Be she can just... Well, go because they say in uh, Dragon Fight, the loser has to admit defeat. Really? I'm like, well, what the? He's dead. How yeah, can he admit defeat? He when admitted he's dead? defeat by dying. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> how that works, in my opinion. But. In Dragon Fight, they have to declare defeat. Uh, yeah, anyway, she's able to. She, like, draws runes on his body or something and is able to just resurrect mm. him. Uh, and look, or Falchion knows this, seems to know this is coming. So this must be a normal thing. He's like, that won't keep him down forever oh or whatever. So this is, like, apparently how Dragon Fights just work. Yeah, but he's not out. Come on. And at this point, I'm like, what the fuck is happening? It makes no sense. I love it. Then we cut and we move forward a little bit. And just uh, they're like, uh, Falchion and Sandra are just like wandering through the desert. And fucking Zadar just shows up and yes. grabs her. Just and Dude, he is, he is like a Scooby-Doo villain. He almost. is. He like pops out of the ground and is like, yoink. <laughs> he just <laughs> takes her. And I love this line. They're like, what? You're alive? It's like. What is happening anymore? What, you're alive? Get that witch working for you. Uh, anyway, so he's able to grab her and get away. So they're fighting now, but Zadar at this point won't fight for some reason. He's just trying to taunt Falchion into, like, attacking him for some reason. Yeah. But Falchion won't do it, and he just kicks Zadar in the balls. <laughs> Man, he kicked him in the balls so hard he was out of commission for, like, an hour. Yes, that did it. That put him out of commission as much as the axe through the spine did. 
<laughs> uh, but they run off, and then they're running. Him and uh, Falchion and uh, Sandra are running through this ravine that is like a very famous. Yes, I've seen so I've many s- pictures and yes. videos and stuff of this ravine they're running it's through. The one that gets crazy when it floods too. Yes, it, yeah, yeah. It. But it's like super famous because like it's like mm. sandstone, whatever it is, and like the way the light comes through and stuff. It's super cool looking. But they were able to film there, and they're running through this little ravine, and then. I love Sandy now is very mad at him because he won't fight or whatever, and she she hits him in the face, and it's like save my life. What do you want from me? Save my life. Save all her life. All right, God. (laughs) And he's like, I'm fucking trying, lady. I don't know what you want from me. Uh, But he gives this very impassioned speech uh, about how he can't stop all the other dragon fights. But he can stop this one, Kyle. <laughs> the only way to win is, is to not, not play. <laughs> I was like, try this same thing with any other, like, like try it with Superman. <laughs> where you, he's like, he's like, yeah, it's, you know, let Apocalypse, you know, have his fun or whatever. Yeah. And you, you gotta save a Superman, and then, like, you punch Superman or you slap him or something like that. It's like, what? The people of the city relied on you and you deserted them. <laughs> It works. As, I guess I don't know. It, it doesn't seem like it would work at all in any regard to be like I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You know. Yeah. It's so dumb. The, everything about this film is. It's not great. It's not ideal. I'll. I'll okay. I will admit that. That's for sure. Real quick, can you check and make sure I see something on my face? What's wrong with your face? Or professionals? Let me just cut that part out. Yeah. <laughs> um. I love. Then we cut back to uh, Bill Pullman, and he has this great line where we were clearly the version we watched was clearly edited for TV or mm-hmm. something, because he has this great line. He goes, "Come on, Jack, wake up. That's chicken feet." A raise, a promotion, the presidency of this company. Come on, Jack, wake up. That's chicken feet. And he's clearly saying that's chicken shit. <laughs> but yeah. he goes, "That's chicken yeah. feet," and you can see it dubbed over. It's, so bad. it's amazing. We also learned that uh, not uh, <laughs> not. Not uh, who'd you say it was? Bill Pullman. Bill who, Pullman. That's who I'm calling him. Uh, not him is double dipped on the bets. Yes, that's the big reveal. He's basically made it to where his security covers his bets on both sides. He's, ba- he's playing both sides. Yeah. yeah. So no matter what happens, he wins. And sure. He, so if Lockaber wins, you take over Gila. If you lose, I can't lose. And he he's also the commission for it. What a weird like you. Okay, you so you bet on both sides. And you take commission on top? I I don't know. Again, I anytime that stuff was started being talked about, my eyes just glazed over, and I was like, "Get back to Robert and our <laughs> axing people." Like, I don't care. I don't. We care. gotta talk about business. <laughs> uh, then we get some more f- sad backstory about Falchion, and we find out that he's talking to Sandy, and we find out that he was with a woman, but she left him. Be- like like it's the traditional cop story. Like he was a too attached to the game. I was too I was too invested in killing people for corporate greed. <laughs> and she was like, "No, you got to you got to turn away from that. I couldn't couldn't do I it. I couldn't turn away from the life of, of, of killing another man for corporate overlords." She begged me to retire. To live a nice peaceful life with her. And she left me. She left me. And Sandy's like, "I love you." And smooch smooch smooch. Oh, oh everything's fuck better. Off. Everything's now everything's fine <laughs> just immediately she's like oh well i love you and it's like okay you guys don't even whatever okay. fine cool um then there's a great song during this part it's so good uh let's see the warrior come and go across the beaten sand it's so fucking good i love this there's like a montage as they're walking through the desert i love it so much And then randomly, this also happens a lot in this movie and the next movie, next episode that we'll be talking about. All of a sudden, these characters are just back together again. Drunkle and the park ranger are just back with Sandra and yep. <laughs> and, and Falchion, yep. and we have no idea how they you met something back was up. Missed. Something was cut out. Clearly something was cut out, because um, they're just back together now. But then Falchion runs off on his own to go fight Zadar or something. I can't remember. And then just he... loses track of him or something. Something. Like, like his ability to track down Zadar is awful in comparison to Zar's ability to track down him. Yes. Like yeah, it's wild. Like, Zadar is a Scooby Doo villain. Well, he'll he'll just be like, and and I'm what? here. <laughs> uh, Falchion is like a lost. He's, he's a lost puppy. Yeah, he's a lost puppy. Yeah. You get your ass out there and you find that fucking dog. 
But he does notice there's a trap on the ground that he doesn't trigger. There's like a a, a, a trip wire, mm. and he looks up and realizes it's, it's, a, it's a like rock yeah, or whatever. Rock, it's gonna cause slide. like a landslide. And then what I thought what he was gonna do was he was gonna like throw something at it from far away to trigger it, but he just goes up to the cliff. And like pushes the rocks onto Robert Zadar, yes. and I was like, "Wait, oh. what?" He just pushes all these rocks onto Robert Zadar, and again, Magic Lady just resurrects him, and yep. he's fine. Oh, he's good. He's good. It's fine. <laughs> then we cut to the family. We see the oh, of this family who is camping or whatever. And I have to. It's one shot. I don't think we ever see this kid again. They have two kids. Mm. One of them we see quite a bit. The second one we don't. That second kid is in like the first shot where the family is introduced is dressed like Boy George or something. I don't know. It's the most insane like flock of seagulls like some, some 80s outfit. I, I, I was like, what is that child wearing? <laughs> and then we never see that kid again. Just desperately looking like some sort of like Eastern European vagabond. <laughs> yes, it's incredible. Uh, and then uh, Camping Dad gets killed by Robert Zadar yes. or whatever. <laughs> and then I love the other little kid has a fake gun and is pointing it at Zadar, and Zadar's just going to murder him. But don't worry, Drunkle <laughs> saves yes. the day. Saves him with a shovel. Yeah, he shows up with a shovel. He's like, I'll save the day. Uh, but he gets stabbed. He gets stabbed by, he ends up dying. Saves the kid, but dies in the process. Mm. Oh no, Drunkle. I love, he He has a great line as he's dying. <laughs> Hell, you don't even have to bury it by a degradable old phony like me. <laughs> it's like, I love this guy. He's fantastic. Hell, you don't even have to bury a biodegradable old phony like me. <laughs> and then as he's dying, he has this great <laughs> monologue. It's not the hand. It's not the hand that holds the sword. It's the hand releasing the sword. Must I read that somewhere. Must be the empty hand. <laughs> yeah. Now do me a favor and give me one last beer. Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, give me a beer. I want my last beer as he's dying. And I love it. He starts drinking and goes, I've had enough. Ugh. <laughs> keels over. I've had enough. And I love at that moment, it's a good setup because he's like, I've had enough dead. And Falchion gets to follow up. So have I. So have I. Da, 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 da. Now he's got to go take down Zadar because he killed Drunkle. And that's the biggest motivation that, that okay. Falchion has had this whole movie. Um, so he goes off to uh, to fight Zadar, and again, it's, it kills me how often Zadar in this movie just walks, swinging his axe in a circle, but not like in a way that's so insane. He his arm is straight, and he like windmills it so awkwardly over, and I just it's so strange. I don't understand it at all. But uh, anyways, um, then he's fighting. Charles Napier, right? Charles Napier, yes. And Charles Napier is able to grab the axe and is like struggling with it. <laughs> Surprise! Zadar's got, got a He's got a, hid, yeah, a hidden uh, dagger out of the handle. Yeah. <laughs> he pulls it out and just, just pales him. him. He's like, ah, gotcha. Oh, oh it's okay. incredible. Uh, and then we see a bunch of shots of Zadar just walking through the desert, looking very serious, dressed like an absolute <laughs> clown. And it is the juxtaposition of those moments are so good, dude. He's like, I'm a death machine. I'm a killing machine. And then you, you see him and you're like, oh, my God. Okay. What are you wearing, dude? <laughs> He got lost going to a Ren fair. <laughs> yes. And then this is where the movie really struggles with the, like, we're just watching people walk through the desert. Because we spend, I had a, my note literally says, holy shit, this scene must end. We just watch Sandra scramble over rocks forever. And we, then we cut back to Zadar, like, standing in the desert. Then we cut to her scrambling over rocks. And the music is identical. It's so infuriating. You, you hear Nick, uh, Neil Breen scream in the background. Ah! Absolutely. Uh, finally, he does find her, uh, and Falchion has to show up just in the nick of time to save Sandra. And I was like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Maybe we can wrap this motherfucker up. Falchion! They, oh, 
Falchion shows up, but he then shows up wearing a, his battle outfit, which is like he has full denim jacket. He's yes. wearing a he's wearing a, a Canadian, Canadian tuxedo. tuxedo. Yep. But he has black leather chaps and a vest what? over yes. the denim. What the it's incredible. I don't know where that came from, but it's so fucking funny, dude. I love it so much. And then you mentioned that they're like, no, they're out of the fighting zone. And I'm like, who fucking cares? Yeah, what is whatever. You're doing an illegal whatever. It doesn't matter. It doesn't none of this matter. Apparently matters. the feds are after them now, so they they all book it. We're finished. They're out of the fighting zone. There is no fight. I'm getting out of here before the feds show up. Yes, they they're all like, ah, we gotta get the fuck out of here. Uh we're this is this is bullshit. Meanwhile, the Japanese company's just gonna commit suicide because <laughs> yeah. of they dishonorable. Give the ritualistic swords are like seppuku. Yeah, they're like, here are your swords for killing yourself. I'm like, what is hap it's in this shit is crazy. To have played and even lost the dragon fight would have been honorable. Um and then we just get the uh the most clumsy climactic fight. Yeah. Half the fight is them running up a hill, like stumbling up a rocky hill, chasing each other. And even when they get into the most intense part where they're just like, they don't even have weapons. They're just struggling, grabbing yeah, each they're other. They're fist fighting everything. And then a helicopter <laughs> just randomly lands was, next was to them. Was this the executive helicopter or something? Or? I have no idea because it lands and they there's fight next no, to it and then it just takes off and flies like away. There's no reason for this helicopter to be there. I, I could not figure out what this helicopter was fucking doing there at all. Anyways, uh, tail rotor, uh, they're getting closer. We get the Raiders to, fight. Yeah. It's the fucking Raiders fight. I was like, come on, <laughs> fuck off. Come on, give it also, didn't that happen in the, uh, uh, yes, Gary Daniels? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the guy gets like shotgunned into the rotors of the helicopter. Yes. It happens like twice in that movie. Oh, I think, but yeah. But, uh, they get, they, they're like struggling uh, to push each other into the rotor. Yeah. And then our hero throws the R into it and he just gets a face full of blood. Yeah. yeah! But why does that kill Zadar? Nothing else he, has. Why can't he get res again? Oh, the fighting zone? Maybe because he's outside the fighting zone. Mm, that's, that's the only the thing. the only thing that yeah. makes any sense. Because it just otherwise makes no sense that he's just actually dead from that. And I love the pilot feels something hit his helicopter. And he's like, that? Nah, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Hey, hey you know that uh, very important component to your yeah. helicopter that's needed for stability? Yes. Oh, I felt something hit it. I know. I'll just fly away without checking anything. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> Cut to scene of him <laughs> crashing like 30 <laughs> seconds later because his fucking tail rotor is completely destroyed. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, I, again, I still, I was like, what was that helicopter? I don't know where, how it was there, why it was there. No idea. And um, of course, they, they they also leave our hero and Sandy just out stuck out in the middle of the desert yeah. with no way to get home. No way to get home, and they just he walks up and then he buries Robert Zadar in rocks and then leaves his sword there, and the movie ends. And I don't understand what any of this meant. I don't understand that ending. I don't understand the credits just roll over the sword in the ground. I'm like, what did he get a sixth ring? What was the sixth ring? We never mentioned the ring again, Kyle. It was never fucking brought back up again. I don't understand it, but. The ending credits music is incredible. So, <laughs> road looks rough when you're running on empty. Think I might not make it through that storm. <laughs> All your sins are <laughs> are washed away. Dragon fight. <laughs> Love that imagery of like everything here is un like nothing's complete, nothing's connected. Everything is loose and flying all over the place, and and you have like angry people coming up to your window yelling at you that you gave them the shitty, uh, shitty service, and you're like, din -in 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 and everybody's like, okay. But yeah. have you considered <laughs> how good this song is? <laughs> It's incredible ending music. It's fantastic. Ugh. That's a weird ass ending. I don't even know what to make of it. And I don't know what I would judge this movie, Kyle. Do you? It, I have no fucking idea. When we get into the long desert parts, it's definitely bad, bad. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I would say it's probably bad, bad. It's probably bad, bad. Because the, the only but really good part, yeah, the only really good, I found it pretty boring at times. The only really good parts 
are Zadar looking like Zadar, like just like an absolute clown of a human being. But um, the rest of the movie is kind of just like boring. And some of the fights are kind of fun, but it's not oh, it's that over the top. I don't know. I would also agree that it's bad, bad. But it has... It's, it's on the higher end of bad, bad movies, I guess I would say. There's some great music. What, so. what, what you have taught me, Brian, is a very important life lesson, that if I'm ever getting into a situation where my physical being is threatened by an angry mob, um, I'll just go, sweet Caroline. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> It'll make everything better. <laughs> It's the solution to get out of everything. That's going to do it for this episode. As always, you can do us a giant favor by heading over to patreon.com slash GBRBB. Support us there for a few bucks a month. We have a new thing we're doing. So we've been trying to figure out a new way to, to give something to our patrons. We have it figured out. We're actually recording the first two episodes of that today after we wrap up these episodes, the main episodes. And it's going to be at the $5 low. I can't remember where, but it'll we'll add it to the thing. We're basically, instead of doing just the podcast, we're going to have that still be a thing. But we're going to do very short uh, episodes, probably one a month of, so I guess the best way I could, could compare this is, you know, episodes of best of the worst where they do like the yeah. wheel and yes. it's like random short videos. <laughs> yes. We're going to do single little short, like 10, 20 minute video tops, mm. um, and talk about those and release those as bonus content on Patreon. So if you haven't checked out Patreon or if you were on a Patreon and you dropped off cause we weren't putting out that much content on it for a while. Sorry. Um, <laughs> You still got some benefits, but we weren't putting out a ton of content. Yeah. We're gonna, we're actually going to start this up, uh, and we should have an episode out every month. Um, again, we're recording two today, so mm -hmm. that should be coming very soon for our patrons. You can check that out. Uh, what were you going to say? Something? Oh no, I was going to come on something later after. Okay, uh, I have a podcast called This Film Is It. We're talking about movies that are based on books. When this episode's out, our most recent episode will have been the Guernsey Literary and Potato Potato Peel Pie Society. Have you ever heard of that? No, no. you haven't. <laughs> what <laughs> is a World War Two? romance movie i don't know it's it it looks interesting anyways that's what we've done most recently also wanted to mention this because i forgot all right uh, uh, this will be out in time if you are one of our so spoilers we this podcast or this show and my podcast are uh produced in cape Girardo, missouri if you're in that area or anywhere around it katie and i for this film is lit will be performing a live podcast at cape con this Ooh. year september 30th and october 1st i don't know what time we'll be doing our show yet um, but we'll be there throughout the weekend uh, in the podcast lounge, I believe it's called. Very cool. um, doing a live show. Uh, again, I don't know what time or anything yet. I don't think any of those details have been figured out yet. But we will be there. And we're doing a special episode. It will also get released on our main feed later down the line for all of our listeners. If you can't make it. But if you are in the area and you want to come, we'll be there. You could meet us. That'll be fun. Uh, were you going to say something, Kyle? Yes. Um, I have been uh, doing some watch parties like, yeah. Yeah, every, every other weekend or so. Uh, this last one was called Hostage Train, a.k.a. Cracker Jack 2. <laughs> that had hostage it starred, what? Uh, hostage Train. Oh, Hostage Train. Okay. Uh, and it, it starred uh, Judd Reinhold. Fan, you just, that should tell you exactly everything you need to know. Yeah. Even though it's called Hostage Train, aside from hostages on the train, we only spent about five minutes on the train itself. And it's basically what a lie. Just, it's diehard in a mine shaft. But we've been watching. We've been going. Why didn't they call it hostage like, mine? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> they should. It's exciting. But we've been doing some. Uh, I've been doing some additional uh, yeah. little, little watch parties. We've been going little mystery science theater with it too. There you go. Over the wackiness and tr these. These are some crazy ones. Uh, and all these are just like fan suggestion ones. I, mm -hmm. I asked them in Discord. We watch it through there. Get some fun with the soundboard every now and then. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, Very it's a lot good. of fun. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to be a part of that, uh, that uh, takes place in Discord. All that information, including link to my podcast, all that sort of stuff is in the description down below. Go check that out. I believe that's everything we have time for today. Until next time, keep watching movies. Eh, maybe probably not, not Dragon, dragon and Fight. fight. Just dragon <laughs> Fight! <laughs> all right, let's end it there. I was going to say something, but I don't have anything better than that. <laughs>